My name is Gabe. I'm 23 years old and I'm a bodybuilder. <laughs> I'm from Bangor, Pennsylvania. I've lived here pretty much all my life. I found bodybuilding when I was like maybe 14 years old. It wasn't until like my sophomore year of high school that I really got serious about powerlifting and bodybuilding. I met a guy named Brandon who was one of my older brother's friends. When I met him, he kind of just like, he took me under his wing and he basically, he taught me everything I know about bodybuilding. But he kind of gave me the confidence in myself. If you listen to this guy, he's gonna lead you in the right direction. So that made me confident in knowing like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. You know, I competed in my first powerlifting meet when I was like 16 years old. Benched like 280. I maybe squatted like, I don't know, over 400 pounds maybe and like deadlifted like 450 or something. And that was a really cool experience for me. I've never like won a trophy or like a medal for something. You know, that was like the first time I felt like accomplishment and like from age like 15 to age, we'll say 18, I gained like a hundred pounds. This was in high school. You know, I was like obsessed with lifting and eating and getting bigger and stronger. I just didn't give a shit about anything else. Money, girls, you know, and I had a girlfriend at the time and you know, I had an amazing childhood. Like I was raised well, I was taken care of. You know, when I was in high school, I guess you could say things like, like reality started to set in. Like I was 17 years old and my parents, you know, decided that they were gonna get divorced. You know, I went from, you know, living in like a 3,500 square foot house to like literally like a 400 square foot like add on with me my younger sisters and my mom and our two dogs. You know, my mom used to buy all my food, my supplements, everything for me. And it turned into, you know, hey Gabe, I can't buy this for you anymore. You're gonna have to go halves on this. From from age like 17, 18 to like, now I'm 23, I probably worked 25, 30 different jobs. I used to think like, oh, you know, I'm a job hopper. Like I can't keep a job, you know, like, oh God, I used to beat myself up about it. But really it was like, I look back and it was like probably the best thing I could have done because I learned how to communicate with different types of people, different types of situations. You know, I've worked every single kind of job you could think of. I worked at sales jobs, as a dishwasher, I worked in every warehouse in this area. Hard labor, landscaping, like the moral of the story is that all this, these bad things were happening. Like, you know, financial hardships, my parents' divorce, you know, I'm going through problems with my, my relationship with my girlfriend. And through all of this, I'm still bodybuilding. Like I'm still training, I'm still dieting. And of course, you know, I've had highs and lows where I'm more consistent, less consistent, but I still was doing it the entire time. You know, at any point, you know, I could have just thrown in the towel and said, fuck this. Made every excuse in the book. Oh, I don't have the, I don't have the genetics for bodybuilding. I don't have the financial backing. You know, I don't have the connections. I don't have this, I don't have that, but I never let that stop me. It's either every decision you make is either an expense or an investment. Like you can look at it as an investment that you get the return later yeah. versus an expense that just takes from you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Then, then you can, that's helping me justify like, every decision I make. I literally just go to the grocery store, I get all the shit I need. I don't keep a budget or anything. Like I need my special foods, you know what I'm saying? If you ask any bodybuilder, there's a spiritual side to bodybuilding. There's this ritual. It's like before I go to the gym, I, I'm eating, drinking certain things. I'm priming my body, I'm warming up, I have the right clothes on, I have the right equipment, I have the right, you know, I have my headphones in, I have, everything's perfect leading up to that session, to the gym. I can't explain it, but it's like, you, you almost have to be a little fucked up in your head to like understand what it is. And me and my, me and my, my friend Brandon, or my mentor Brandon, we would say, you gotta be a little crazy in your head to do what we do. There has to be a good reason why you're doing it. You can't be for, you know, girls, which by the way, you're not gonna get more girls if you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> That's like the opposite. If anything, you're gonna get more attention from guys. <laughs> you're gonna be like, yo bro, uh, dude, your arms are so fucking big. You're like, I gotta know how you do it. Or like, bro, your chest. It's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's all from guys. <laughs> like, if anything, girls are gonna like you less. Like, don't let the movies and the media, like try to tell you that the bigger you are, the more girls you're gonna get. I, I disagree with that, but bodybuilding changed my life for the better. You know, it gave me purpose. It gave, you know, it gave me a reason to wake up in the morning. It's like the heartbeat of my life, you know, and I can go a day without working out, you know what I'm saying? But I can't think of a life where I don't have that to go to. The, the longer I train, the, the more educated I become and the more, it's like the more faith I have in myself that I can actually do this. 
Like, there's been times, guys, where, you know, I had no fucking money. Like, no money. Like, and I still found a way. Like, and I mean, like, not just no money. I mean, like, no money, no car, like, nothing. Like, when I first moved back to PA, I didn't have a car because, I, you know, I sold everything, you know, both ways. I sold everything to go there. Right. And then I sold everything to come back. Right. So I, I didn't own a car when I was out in California, but when I got out here, you know, I was riding, I was riding uh, Nick's, one of Nick's bikes uh, to and from work. I worked right down the street at this call center. But luckily, one of my good buddies, Jaron, who uh, actually bought a car from him previously, like two years ago. Okay. Actually, right before I left for California, I bought a, a car off him. This car was just uh, kind of just sitting on his uh, in his yard, and I was like, "Hey, what's going on with that one?" He's like, uh, "It's for sale." And luckily uh, for me, we worked out a little payment program. He uh, let me pay like half of the car, okay. and uh, let me like pay the other half in like small increments. Right. Um, but yeah, it's been doing me good, man. I'm really really happy to finally have like a car of my own again i had no car for like over a year so that's tough um, you remember having to walk everywhere oh my god yeah it was just it looked so awkward like i was like riding my bike in like formal like clothes like khakis and like a nice shirt <laughs> i'm like riding my bike in like the summer heat i'm like stripping sweat by the time i get to work <laughs> you know, i'll be driving now some days and i'll like pass by a place i used to walk and i'm just like damn like i remember the feeling of being in that situation and looking at everyone driving by like you know now that like you know it's nothing crazy but just having just like those little things like having a vehicle it just means so so much to me i still found a way because i had the will you create a good physique it doesn't just happen overnight it's a hundred percent willpower and determination and seeing things it's almost like you have to foreshadow like when i was 15 years old i i I imagined myself to look like I did, I do now. It wasn't just like, I hope I get there. He's like, these are some of the first ads I ever saw uh, when I got like Flex Magazine in the, uh, in the, the mail. This is Frank McGrath, this is David, David Hoffman, and uh, Evan Centipani. I actually met Evan Centipani. I actually met Frank McGrath and Evan Centipani. Just these these posters, man. It's just like something, something about it is very spiritual for me. It's kind of like this like image of myself coming to fruition. I kind of like compare myself to these guys, but it's like, what do you expect when you stare at these pictures for eight years straight? <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Bodybuilding, yeah. hands down, it's an art form. I am an artist in every way, shape or form, I'm an artist. I can't think of a better way for me to express myself than bodybuilding. It's just like, I get so I get so emotional about it because like, it just means so much to me. And like, I, I know that, you know, whether it has been like a client of mine or maybe like a young kid who's fo been following me since the beginning, it's like, I've actually inspired people to change their lives. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, it, it baffles me sometimes. It's like, really, you look up to me? Like, <laughs> cause you were that kid. I, I mean, I was that kid, you know, I, I wasn't, and I wasn't by any means, you know, a big kid growing up, I was like, really really skinny I, I was like the opposite of a bodybuilder um you know i would like smoke cigarettes and like drink every weekend and smoke weed and shit and it's like i don't know i don't know where i would be if i didn't have bodybuilding right now it's just crazy because these people that have helped me over the years didn't have to do it they didn't have to do anything for me and for that i'm forever grateful you know i used to think that i could do it all on my own but you truly can't bodybuilding is not a one-man show and it's a very selfish sport but there's a lot more that goes into it than people would think the one thing that's remained consistent in my life has been bodybuilding. You know, through all the breakups I went through, the financial struggles, my parents' divorce, my health issues. Through it all, I've had this one thing. And for you, it doesn't have to be bodybuilding. It doesn't have to be fitness. It just has to be like the one thing that defines you, that, that wakes you up in the morning. When I was, 14 years old, 150 pounds, drinking every weekend, smoking cigarettes. I had no reason to believe that I could possibly one day become a professional bodybuilder. But now, I, I have every reason to believe that I could do it.